I'm heading south on Interstate 5, just south of Bakersfield into the Tahan Pass, also known as the Grapevine. This is the juncture between the San Emigdio mountain range and the Tehachapi mountain range, which are transverse ranges, meaning they run east to west instead of north to south, like most of the main mountain ranges in the western United States. They parallel the coastline, they parallel the plate boundaries, essentially. These guys run east to west. They're a little, uh, a little outliers. And yeah, these ranges, the Migdios, the Tehachapis, the San Gabriel Mountains, the San Bernardino Mountains, as we go south into the zone of compression, those guys are all kind of rebels. And what we're entering into also is the Big Bend, which is where the San Andreas kind of turns a little bit to the east, a little bit more. So that smooth lateral motion of, of the straight line fault kind of smoothly slipping by each other uh, comes across a little more pressure. So we're, we're heading up there. There's an interesting juncture in the fault system with another significant fault system called the Garlock Fault. And that's a left lateral strike slip fault that actually terminates right at the San Andreas. We're going to take a look at that. I'm going to see if I can find any trace of that fault. I don't know if I'm going to find anything. This area I really don't know much about, so it's going to be interesting. Looking northwest up Fraser Mountain Park Road. This is all the San Andreas fault system coming down here along the front of this uh, Fraser Mountain, which is about 8,000 feet high, and it sweeps along here. It kind of curves and comes in underneath the I-5 at kind of an angle. I guess it kind of runs along underneath it for a little while. I'm not sure, but I'm, I think I might be in the San Andreas Fault here, or possibly a strand of it, I'm a little ways off of, but parallel to, this is kind of running parallel to Fraser Mountain Park Road. Yeah, this, uh, this is basically just a stream bed here. But I know something about this topography, it, it's uh, kind of saying there's more involved with this. And uh, yeah, it looks like, you know, it may have been um, um, it, an indentation in the ground caused by the fault, which made for a nice stream bed later on. But I think I'm quite a bit uh, far away from the end of the Garlock Fault, which I couldn't find. I couldn't find any really clear trace of the end you know, of the Garlock Fault. I'm going to look around a little bit more. So. This is roughly the area of the Garlock Fault Zone. It runs along these foothills here, and it goes right under Lake Castic not to be confused with Castaic Lake further south. Uh, there's a stream bed I walk down there. Uh, it, it ends right around here. I, I looked up the coordinates and it's uh, the rough coordinates. I could, from what I could tell, at the, some, somewhere around here it joins up. It doesn't really join up like right up against it. You know, you can't really see a clear juncture with the uh, San Andreas Fault that runs along the foothills, it arcs around there and runs along the foothills of Fraser Peak. And then the Garlock comes along this way. There's a riverbed, but that's mostly carved out by water. And it's uh, it's not necessarily a, a clear fault trace. And it goes under, it goes right under Castic Lake. And it continues on northeast. The significance of 
the Garlock fault system right now is based on the quake from 2019 in the Ridgecrest area, which was actually started by a lesser, like a foreshock to a bigger quake on, a, on another, another fault. I think it's called the Little Lake Fault. But that, that first quake was about six in the six magnitudes. And then the, there, were, there were two aftershocks of that, but one is on a different fault and it was a seven magnitude. And scientists believe now that the Garlock Fault, which has been dormant for 600 years, may actually have been brought back to life by that quake. And uh, that quake may have built up some pressure on this fault. And this fault could actually, in the worst scenario, it's a rupture along this fault could trigger the San Andreas in this area. And so sort of like being a similar scenario where there was a foreshock, uh, probably a lesser magnitude. I decided to head northwest a little ways on the Fraser Mountain Park Road into the San Andreas Rift Zone over here. It's uh, we're right now we're just on the opposite side of Fraser Mountain. And this road basically follows the San Andreas Fault through much of the Big Bend area. I'm on the northwest side of Fraser Peak over here, and this whole area is the San Andreas Rift Valley. As you can see, there are a lot of really beautiful homes, and it's a gorgeous setting. I can't blame anyone for wanting to live here. It's uh, absolutely gorgeous, but it is right on the San Andreas Fault. Uh, over here, somewhere thereabouts, there's supposed to be a scarp that was formed all in one abrupt moment during the 1857 quake in uh, Fort Tejan area. Uh, it's kind of overgrown now. I have a photo that shows it before there were a bunch of houses and there was more of the bare dirt that you can see. But um, yeah, allegedly that's like one abrupt thing that happened. There was a displacement of, of the fault all along over 225 mile length of the fault line during that event and that was the last uh, earthquake in the southern part of the San Andreas with a magnitude of about 7.9 on the Richter scale.